Hey everyone, Aaron Davis from SCP Euro, and today I'm going to show you how to replace your front brakes on your Audi S3. Today we have a 2016 Audi S3, however to replace the front brakes it'd be similar to replace it for the Audi A3 or the Audi TT in the MQB chassis. In front of me I have Zimmerman Sport cross-drilled rotors and Ate ceramic brake pads. What's nice about the Zimmerman cross-drilled rotors are they're actually coated and that helps prevent with uh, corrosion and also the cross-drilled actually helps heat escape to allow the rotor to keep cool. Now we have Ate ceramic brake pads. Ceramic is actually made from ceramic mix and copper fibers. And this allows the brake pad to operate at high temperatures and also applies a better brake feel and also you do not have as much noise or brake dust. If you're experiencing a lot of brake dust, I highly suggest you actually get ceramic brakes. So now let's take a look at the tools you're gonna to need to complete this job. So the tools you're gonna to need to replace the front brakes on this Audi S3 is gonna be a half inch torque wrench, 3 8 torque wrench, 3 8 ratchet, a 17 millimeter socket, a 21 millimeter socket, a T13, a pry bar, caliper hangers, pliers, 90 degree hook pick, piston compressor, and a hammer. You don't need impact guns to do this job, but if you do have them, it makes the job a lot easier. So let's go replace the front brakes. So now we're on the passenger side of the vehicle. We're doing the passenger side because the passenger side does have the brake pad wear sensor. However, the steps are the same on the driver's side. It just does not have the brake pad wear sensor. First thing you wanna do is locate the lug cap. There's a hole right here. I use a 90 degree hook pick. Just lightly tug, comes right off. Now the next thing you want to do is remove the 517 millimeters to remove the wheel. So now that I have the front wheel off, I'm going to go ahead and compress the piston and the caliper so we can remove the caliper easy. I'm going to use a little pry bar. I pry against the brake pad in the rotor and push it back a little bit so we have clearance. I'm going to go ahead to remove the caliper from the vehicle. So now that the piston's compressed, I'm gonna take off the two 13 millimeters and also unplug the brake pad wear sensor on the side. There's one located at the top of the caliper. There's one located at the bottom of the caliper. Now notice that there is a nut right here that likes to spin when you loosen the 13 millimeters. So you're gonna to have to grab a pair of pliers that fit in between to counter hold it to take the nuts off. Now before I fully remove the top 13 millimeter bolt, I'm gonna go ahead and take the brake pad wear sensor out of the bracket. You're just gonna gently pull up and then you're gonna squeeze and unplug the connector. Before I take the top 13 millimeter bolt off, I'm gonna go ahead and grab my caliper hanger. Just wrap it around the spring. So this actually holds your caliper up so it doesn't fall while you're doing the job. Now untwist the 13 millimeter bolt. Now we can fully remove the caliper. And now just hang it up like that. So now that we have the front caliper off, we can go ahead and slide the old brake pads out. So now the brake pads are removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove the caliper carrier. They're held in by two 21 millimeters. They are really tight, so I'm using a half inch. And now you can remove the carrier. All right, so now that the caliper carrier is removed, we're gonna go ahead and remove the rotor. A trick I like to use is I take one of the wheel lugs, I thread it in a couple times. Now I'm gonna take a T30. We're gonna move this bolt on the rotor, zap it off. So I went ahead and removed the T30. Um, the rotor actually came off, which is actually kind of surprising. Usually they are stuck or seized on. If you do run into that, use a 17 millimeter lug trick and you're gonna to wanna to take a hammer and start hitting the hat of the rotor to shock it off. And the lug's there just so it doesn't fall off and hit you on the foot or so you don't get injured. Now go ahead and remove the 17 millimeter lug. Now we can go ahead and remove the rotor. So now that the rotor's removed, I go ahead and use a wire brush and clean up the hub. You want to get all this dirt and build up off so this rotor sits nice and even. Let's go back and forth and get this all off. 
Also clean around the hub right here where the wheel sits. So now after you hit the hub with the wire brush, I go ahead and take some brake clean. And just clean off the hub. So now we're gonna fully collapse the piston for the caliper so we can go ahead and install the brand new brake pads. It's tight on both sides. Just slowly compress the piston all the way in. Once the piston's fully collapsed, this should be able to slide out easily. So now that the caliper's completely closed, we're gonna go ahead and put some anti-seize on this hub so the brake rotor can fall off easily the next time you do brakes. All right, so now that I've put anti-seize on the hub, we're gonna go ahead and install the new rotor. I'm gonna line up this little hole where the T30 goes to the hole in the hub. Now I'm gonna take the T30. I thread it in by hand first. You don't wanna cross thread it. And you go ahead and just give it a quick little zap. And that's fine. So now that the rotor's installed, I'm gonna go ahead and, and clean the caliper carrier. It's important to clean these because this is where the brake pads slide. And if you don't clean it, you can have terrible squeaking noises. So I'm just gonna go lightly with the wire brush. So now that I brushed it with the wire brush, I'm gonna go ahead with my brake clean. All right, so now the rotor's on and the caliper carrier is clean. We're gonna go ahead and reinstall it. And this is held in by the two 21 millimeter bolts. I thread them both in by hand, then tighten them and then torque them. All right, so now that I tighten both 21 millimeters by hand, I'm gonna go ahead and torque it. Torque spec is 200 Newton meters. So now the brake caliper carrier is installed and torqued. I'm gonna go ahead and install the brake pads. We're gonna do the inward brake pad first. This is the one that has the brake pad wear sensor. And here is you're gonna see the anti-rattle clips, which we're actually gonna lubricate with this Ate brake lube. Now, what you're gonna to wanna to do, let's go ahead and slide it into the caliper carrier. Push in. Now we're gonna do the same step for the outer brake pad. So now the brake pads are installed, we're gonna go ahead and reinstall the brake caliper. Um, before you fully tighten the caliper, you want to make sure the brake pad wear sensor is free. You want to make sure it's not pinched anywhere where you can't plug it back into the sensor. All right, so now it's time to torque the brake caliper to 35 Newton meters. It's 13 millimeter. Now we're gonna do the top bolt. So now that the caliper is installed, we're going to go ahead and plug back in the brake pad wear sensor. Interrupt the brake pad wear sensor up here. You're going to plug it in and then you're going to slide it right back into the bracket like that. Front brakes are installed. We're going to go ahead and reinstall the front wheel. I hope that you found this video useful. As you can see, the front brakes on the Audi S3 or the fronts for the MQB chassis itself are pretty easy to replace. You can either use a lift or jacks in your driveway. Um, they're very straightforward. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment box below. And as always, I'll see you soon.